Welcome back to Community Design Review, where we take a look at some of the best designs this week from the Custom Magic subreddit. Our shoutout card this week is Batch Wizard. It costs two white white for a 2-4 creature, human wizard, with flash and spells resolve in color pie order. That is white, blue, black, red, then green. This feels like a reference to the batch, which predates my time playing magic, so let's do a little research. Okay, turns out the batch didn't work like this. It was extremely complicated though. Imagine the stack, but there are specific times that you have to add mana and cast damage prevention effects and damage always hits creatures last and for some reason interrupts exist. But this still makes the stack resolve in a weird way, which I feel is appropriate flavor. And it does it with simple wording. That said, what if a spell has more than one color? Do we move on to official color pair order? and then tricolor order? I assume so, but it's not spelled out. Moving on to our meme cards for this week. First up, we have Totally Normal Green Spell. It uses all green abilities to create an effective Wrath of God in green. Dope. Our next meme card is Dual Land Cycle. Is that spelled dual on purpose? It's a land that enters the battlefield tapped and adds red or green. You can cycle it, and when you do target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. <laughs> okay, so the name was very intentional. Alternative uses for two words often used with the lands. That's cute. And pretty fair. A fight spell at instant speed tends to cost two mana, so you're paying two more for the ability to draw a card and the flexibility to also have played this as a land. This is both a good design and a funny one. And our last meme card this week is... Infallible Guardsman. It's a 1-1 creature, human soldier, for 2 white that says if Infallible Guardsman would die after blocking a cleric, a rogue, a warrior, or a wizard, exile it and create 2 token copies of it instead. So this is a little wordier than necessary. I would recommend when Infallible Guardsman would die, if it was blocking a cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard, exile it and create 2 token copies of it instead. Now this is a reference to the guards in Skyrim. You can kill one, but more will show up, and they will keep coming until you have to flee town with whatever meager belongings you managed to pickpocket before they caught you. Kind of a cool design, though I'm not sure the Zendikar Rising party mechanic is necessary here, because in Skyrim you don't have a party. I mean, I guess you can have a companion, and I guess your character usually falls into one of these classes, so um, eh, could be fine. Moving on to our top five this week. Number five is Karzan, the Earth Eater. It's a 4-4 legendary creature, Worm, for one black, green, blue that has whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, weird that that's not landfall, put a plus one, plus one counter on Karzan. If that land entered the battlefield from your library, scry one. If that land entered the battlefield from your graveyard, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Ooh, a Sultai commander that actually feels Sultai. You two know what you did. I still love you. Oh, how I love you. But you know what you did. So this is a landfall commander that rewards you for putting lands into play from places other than your hand. That's a really cool concept. And my mind is churning to try to find good ways to abuse this. Ariatho, you've done it again. The only thing is, I'm not sure what the flavor is of a worm creating zombie tokens. I could see it maybe making skeletons if it eats a creature while gulping earth and only leaves behind the bones. But zombies, eh, not so much. Number four is another commander by Ariatho, who at this point is just showing off. Galmar, Depthcaller, is a 1-3 legendary creature, Cephalid Wizard, for blue, blue. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, create a 1-1 blue tentacle creature token. Okay, kind of like Nadir Kraken. Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, and Serpent spells you cast cost one less to cast for each tentacle you control. Oh, oh, that's cool. Okay, so this is a commander for a sea creatures deck, which I've always thought would be super cool, so I could play these cards. And since these creature types are all big creatures, they can really benefit from the cost reduction. I love this design and would love to make a mono blue sea creatures deck with Galmar at the helm. Number three is Light Eater. It's a 6 6 creature, Eldrazi, for five and a colorless. It has Sun Drain. That sounds like the opposite of Sunburst. This enters the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. And other creatures on the battlefield get minus one, minus one for each minus one, minus one counter on Light Eater. Um, on the battlefield is unnecessary, but other than that, this card is super cool. I thought it was going to punish you for casting this spell with colored mana, but it faked me out. <laughs> and perfect flavor too, it's eating the colors of mana you put into it and getting stronger, weaker, as you do so. Interestingly, you might want to play this for fewer colors than you have available, based on what creatures you and your opponents have in play. That makes for interesting gameplay decisions, which makes for a good design. Number two this week is Advanced Player's Guide, okay? 
It's a two-drop artifact with barbarians, knights, and monks are warriors in addition to their other types. Oh, okay, it's just an update to include other D&D classes in the party system. Druids, shamans, and mystics are clerics in addition to their other types. Wait, mystic isn't a creature type. It is. Weird. Archers, assassins, and scouts are rogues in addition to their other types, and artificers, spell shapers, and warlocks are wizards in addition to their other types. This is a cool effect. It's kind of a weak card, but if you have the right party synergies, it could really make up for it. This expands your potential party members by a massive amount. And our number one card this week is... Two cards? Hilna, Charm of Anroth, is a 1-3 legendary creature, human wizard for blue-blue. She has partner with Anroth, and one blue, tap... Target creature loses all abilities and becomes a 1-1 blue bird with flying until end of turn. Okay. And Anroth, Blade of Hilna, is a 2-2 legendary creature, human rogue for black-black with partner with Hilna and one black tap. Target creature gets minus 1-1 one, minus one until end of turn. When that creature dies this turn, you draw a card and lose one life. That should say you lose one life. Wow, so first of all, the art is gorgeous. I love how it and the flavor tie together. I'm getting a real uh, Micaiah and South vibe from these two. So Micaiah, <clears throat> Hilna, turns creatures into birds, and then her companion murders them and loots the body, which is in theme with the D&D stuff we've been getting. Note the relevant creature types. On their own, they both are quite playable, but obviously they get better together, killing any creature and drawing you a card. But I think there are enough hoops to jump through that these are balanced. So you can cast a few spells? Am I supposed to be impressed? Shut up, you. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and submit your own designs to the Custom Magic subreddit. We'll be back next Tuesday to look at some more of your designs.